it isn't why baskets, it's why, it's why Japanese baskets. So I really it was enamored with the Japanese aesthetic. And for me, the simplicity, the ruggedness, the feeling of hands-on, the spatial relationships, the textures, all those were the things that I really liked. And the fact that the Japanese baskets did embody part of the artisan, the craft culture, the person, and the res respect for the material, and the economy of the material in creating space. And those are the things, space, texture. Lastly for me was technique. The Japanese was the other way around. Japanese, if you ask them what basket they like, they'd always go for the high technique basket. Usually it comes from a family, either comes from a, a heritage of basket makers and apprentices. And an apprentice I've known can uh, apply to a master who's between 70 and 80 who is in a sense into a guild and this person wants to study under him, he will spend three years, five years in a, uh, just looking at the master before he's allowed to touch bamboo. And then he's sent out to cut bamboo, which is a very tough job for several years. Maybe ten, seven to 10 years before he even starts to put his hand to make a basket. And this is when they're starting in their 20s, and by the time they're 60, they may be making. Or the master kicks them out and uh, says, don't copy me, so to speak. The other basket makers are people who come from a different profession, who wanted uh, to be expressive and chose bamboo and came from the outside, so to speak, not through the line of working up and, and an apprentice type of relationship. They can't break into the guild. Uh, their baskets, the guild is very traditional. One is you can only use bamboo. The other is if you, or if you have a piece of metal or color, it's not accepted. And it's who you know, not what you do. No different than other societies. I'm not a historian, okay? I'm a collector. So a collector has a narrow view. But in, as I collected, I wanted to know more about it. So. I've been looking at baskets, the earliest baskets coming from China, which were role models, Chinese were role models for Jap to the Japanese in many cultural areas. And then they showed their baskets in very early paintings, and they were flower containers. And what I've, uh, but I've seen in the Japanese marketplace or in the rural areas, baskets are for carrying fruit, they're for carrying charcoal, they're also flower containers. There are trays of bamboo. Some of the, most of them utilitarian. The artwork in it was the carefulness and the precision of the, of the technique of putting the basket together. But most of the baskets in the 19th century are floral arrangements. And that's why this hole here was for to hold a flower to hold a flower setting, an Ikebana arrangement, an Ikebana arrangement. Whereas this one here has no place for flowers. So there is a change in tradition from flower arranging Ikebana to non-flower. This one here is, is still flower. And this one here, although it's a sort of giant size, uh, it was probably made for a large flower arrangement in a restaurant, more than an intimate home, because of the scale. So somebody ordered that for their little restaurant, went to a wholesaler, the wholesaler got somebody to make it. This is, looks like just a weaving, a plat mat, and yet it's contrasted with these swirling bands, which is bamboo layered up, the complete opposite of this type of thing. And it gets its size also, there's an inner liner, so it sort of looks like a thermos flask in a way to get that bulk and depth. And then one of the things is how the bamboo is carried up and joined and around and continuous so that the handle becomes an integral part of the basket. And the contrast between smooth and rough and hurly-burly like the waves, we don't see the order. 
but it's kept in check, and this is the background surface. Now, a untraditional basket would be this one here, which is made of bamboo, but it isn't the technique, it's the concept of taking a band, and it's an endless band like a Movia strip, where the beginning is the end, and the end is the beginning, and it comes in itself. So here you see something that is very contemporary, takes your eye in and out, etc. And it really, in a sense, describes a space, but it isn't solid like this. So there are two opposite things happening here in my eyes. Now this is a very personal interpretation of the collector.